Hello and welcome everyone to today's coffee lecture about red flags, tips and tricks for international collaborations, export controls at the University of Bern. And I'll hand over to our guest today. It is Hanna Brodersen and she's from the University of Bern Weisse Rectorate Research and Innovation. Welcome, Hanna. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Indeed, I work at the Vice Rectorate for Research and Innovation in the Research Management Office, and I uh, particularly work on topics related to research compliance and export controls is one of the uh, topics I work on. Others include uh, research integrity and ethics, for example. So this is what I'm planning to talk about. I will uh, walk you through what export controls actually are, but only briefly, because I then want to uh, focus on three scenarios that I have picked out that I think are most relevant for us as a university and for you as researchers, and give you tips and tricks what to do with all the information you'll be getting over the next 10 minutes. And in the end, we'll have time for questions. So export controls in a nutshell. Um, there are three branches of export controls. The first one is um, what you would generally associate with the term export controls. So um, we, or not we, <laughs> but Swiss authorities um, or authorities worldwide, in fact, um, control the export of specific goods, namely of those that can be used for military or criminal purposes. And um, of course, we all know what military purposes could be, but uh, what could be criminal purposes? Well, I've put this in brackets here. Um, for instance, for terrorism, human rights violations, or mass surveillance. And under the export control regime, we have uh, general goods lists. Um, for instance, I think the most famous ones would be the dual use goods list which lists uh, goods that can be used for both civilian and military purposes, or also lists that contain chemicals or biological agents. And whenever you want to export a, a good that is listed on one of these goods lists, you will have to apply for a license. This doesn't mean that you cannot export this good, so you simply have to apply for a license and then the authority will decide. The second branch is uh, concerns embargoes. I'm sure you've all heard about embargoes, especially now uh, since uh, the Russian invasion in Ukraine, Russia is a famous embargo country. Um, and um, so the system works like this, a country would have a general uh, embargo law, um, and then country-specific embargo regulations, which themselves also then may contain goods lists. And these goods lists are country-specific. So for instance, I mentioned Russia. Um, of course, we cannot uh, uh, export military items to Russia at the moment, but the embargo concerning exports goes a lot further than that. For instance, you also cannot um, export certain luxury goods or cars or washing machines to Russia. So there are country-specific goods lists in these embargo regulations. This is the second branch of export controls. The third branch concerns sanctions. Of course, you have also heard about that in the context of the Russian invasion in Ukraine. Um, here we have um, lists that uh, contain mostly people or entities, so companies or organizations. And um, basically, uh, you cannot uh, provide any resources to these people who are listed on these lists. As a university, we surely cannot provide any university uh, resources to listed um, sanctioned persons. And so this makes a research collaboration or also an employment or a guest visit practically impossible because you would always have to provide certain university resources, be that uh, lab space or access to a laptop or so. 
Now, when I talk about goods, I mean uh, both uh, tangible items, but also um, software and technology. And especially te the term technology is um, very broadly uh, defined under export controls as it uh, can also refer to data or knowledge or know-how or information. And when we talk about export, we obviously mean the plane delivery abroad. So when you pack a package or you, you um, ask a delivery service to deliver a certain good, but we also mean the supply for the use abroad. And this includes a variety of scenarios that could be relevant for us at the university. For instance, employment of staff um, or guest research uh, uh, visits. Uh, because you would uh, assume, for instance, concerning a guest researcher, um, that he or she will go back to their own country and take with him or her certain knowledge, for instance, when we talk about technology, that they gained here in Bern. Now, coming to three relevant scenarios. The first one I want to talk about is you want to supervise or recruit or collaborate with someone from an embargo country. The second one will be you deal with goods that could be used for military, nuclear or criminal purposes. And the third one is if you're an American citizen or you work under a U.S. grant or with U.S. goods and you want to collaborate internationally, because this would mean that you would also have to comply with U.S. export control rules which I will come back to when I talk about this scenario. Now, coming to the first scenario. So you want to supervise, recruit, or collaborate with someone from an embargo country, so an international research collaboration, or you want to employ a PhD student or a postdoc from an embargo country, or have a guest, guest uh, visitor from, from an embargo country, or even if you go to an embargo country for a guest research stay. So Swiss embargo countries with embargoes that contain relevant provisions for universities are Belarus, the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Haiti, Iran, Lebanon, Libya, uh, North Korea, Russia, Somalia, Sudan, South Sudan, Syria, Ukraine, Yemen, and Zimbabwe. And as I said, we have country-specific embargo regulations for all of these countries. And what you would have to do if you want to collaborate with one of uh, with a, with a partner in or from one of these countries, is you would have to check whether your partner is listed as a sanctioned person. You should know that also. Uh, certain universities can be sanctioned persons. So, I mean, on the international sanctions lists, there are some universities, especially from uh, Iran uh, or in Russia. You should also check whether the country-specific embargo covers what you want to do or what you want to research together with their partner, or even if you want to do some teaching in, in that country. Um, and if so, you would have to apply for a license with the relevant Swiss authority, which is the SECO. Of course, um, my job would be to advise you in all of this and uh, to help you with all of these steps. So my advice or my request to you would be to contact me whenever you would uh, plan a research collaboration or an employment um, with partners from these countries. Second scenario, you deal with goods that could be used for military, nuclear, or criminal purposes. So, as I said, um, we have goods lists, so you would have to check whether the good that you're dealing with, I recall that it can also be technology or software, is listed on one of the goods lists, um, or if even if it is not listed, if you think there could still be a military end use to your, to your item or to your technology, um, this would also be included under export controls. So if you have um, a suspicion here, 
please also contact me and I can check with you whether um, whether your list is listed on one of the goods lists. Well, and of course, you would still have to export your goods. So, of course, uh, it, it just in Bern, um, within your lab on your own, you can do whatever you want, what kind of research you want. But as soon as you want to export it, you would uh, have to buy for license. And um, export in the research context uh, could mean, so in international collaboration, obviously, also if you travel abroad and you take your good with you, you share relevant technology via email. It also will cross borders, at least, well, if you send an email to another country, you present at an international conference or you publish your findings um, on a globally accessible journal. Um, then, of course, um, this will also be considered uh, to be an export. And in these cases, as I said, you have to apply for a license and I can help you with this. Here, I just listed a few uh, examples of goods that are listed, listed on the dual use goods list, just to give you an idea what kind of um, um, topics we would be talking about these all uh, I would I would say could be relevant for those of you who work in the natural sciences so beware that for instance there are also viruses bacteria or certain animal or plant pathogens listed and I think many of our researchers work with these um, things <laughs> And um, to come to the third scenario, so you have a U.S. nexus, as we say, so either you are a U.S. citizen, you work with U.S. money, for instance, a grant from the NIH, um, or you work with U.S. goods and you want to collaborate internationally, then you have to comply with U.S. export control rules, with um, U.S. embargoes and with U.S. sanctions. Now, these are the countries that I would say you would have to be careful uh, uh, with international collaborations if you have such a U.S. nexus. So this would be China, North Korea, Iran, Syria, Venezuela, Cuba, Russia, and Belarus at the moment. Um, and again, you would have to check for U.S. sanctions, uh, whether your partner is listed on a U.S. sanctions list you would have to check whether the country-specific embargo covers what you are doing. And if so, you would have to apply for a license with the relevant US authority. And again, I can help you with that. Now, what should you do? Of course, everything I listed before on the slides, but also you can look up more information on our website. You can participate in a more comprehensive training that we provide. Um, you can find the dates on our website, and the next date will be on 17th of July. We can have a look together at your research and your teaching and see whether you deal with any export controlled goods or with any people from embargo countries, for instance. You can always contact us at that email address. And other than that, especially if you don't feel concerned at all by what I have been saying, in the past 10 minutes, you can just continue with what you're doing and everything will be fine.